Welcome back to the Nomi Key Show. Okay, I love this topic so much, and I don't think we talk about it enough on the show. Um, maybe because I do, I'm doing a documentary that 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 touches on this a lot. But this is so fascinating because um, you guys have heard of disaster capitalism. Uh, I think we all understand what gentrification is, but I think there's like another level post COVID um, with so many folks who've who've been fleeing, you know, their cities uh, because it's too expensive to live and, you know, they're working from home and there's no need to commute uh, to many other uh, other effects of, of disaster capitalism and just an economy. So we're going to talk about how specifically vulture investors and capitalists are, are really uh, weaponizing New York law to make more money, whether it's in New York or other parts of the world. Uh, welcome to the show. This is going to be a fun one because we have three guests. <laughs> Jesus Gonzalez, Rob Solano, and Alice Nascimento. I love this. Okay, so <laughs> many friendly faces here, familiar faces. So guys, um, I'm going to try to do this because it's always hard to do it with, with this many people on screen. So feel free to chime in. Let's just do this like a conversation if that works. So we can go around the table and and we'll I'll, you know... Uh, we'll start with each one of you, and you can kind of talk a little bit about your work, and then uh, I'll ask questions. Feel free to chime in. It's okay. That work? Great. All right. Yep. So um, let's Sounds start. Good. Let's start with Jesus. Uh, you're the D director of strategic in initiatives for the Center for Pro Popular uh, Democracy, and um, Jesus, this is. Let's just start off with like, I mean, what are you doing, and what is a vulture capitalist, and what is the New York law that 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 plays, you know, makes this. Uh, worse for folks. Yeah, I can I can dive in a bit. Like first, first my family's from Puerto Rico on the west side. I'm born and raised in Brooklyn. I'm from the Center for Popular Democracy, which is a network of organizations across the country, 33 states in Puerto Rico and in Washington D.C. And so, Elise and others, our New York affiliates, including New York News for Change, Church Seat for Housing, Make the Road New York, Vocal New York, you know, have had corporate accountability campaigns in the past. And this is just like kind of a evolution of that. Like our families after Hurricane Maria have been forced to move. Puerto Rico is facing a crippling debt crisis. And we're just like, okay, what could we do from here um, mm -hmm. in solidarity? Um, and so obviously there's like federal oversight on Puerto Rico's debt crisis as is, <clears throat> but in our findings, like as we're like kind of investigating ways um, Elise has been kind of leading the legislative angles, right? Discovered that, um, I hate to use the word discovered, like found, found like we found out that, um, New York at New York state legislatures actually have reached beyond their borders because, um, most of these debt contracts are negotiated on Wall Street. They're negotiated in Manhattan. And so, um, which means that they have to follow New York state law and the lack of any, oversight or structure has get made it kind of a wild wild west for sovereign debt contracts mm -hmm. in new york which you know most of them are in latin america in the west west side of the world and then there's another half of sovereign debt contracts that are governed by english law and and, and so we're working with folks in the uk um to think about replicating the wow. our legislative uh measures here but i kind of just want to i'm i'm more of a an ad lib singer on the show. So I rather like let the singers actually do the singing and I won't fake like I'm singing. And so I, I just want to kind of jump in sometimes. Sounds <laughs> great. I love it. Well, let's go to Alisi because you, you know, that was a great setup. Um, Alisi Nascimento, if I'm, I, I'm, I hope I'm pronouncing your name right, um, is at New York uh, Communities for Change and a policy expert working on the legislative aspects. So, whoa, like this is like mind blowing. Um, Puerto Rico has this debt. Maybe we should start off with that. Like, what is what's going on with the debt and like why is this a crisis who are they pay how does it how does new york um connect with the debt um first thanks for having us um it's 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 very exciting for us to be here to talk about this um first i if you don't mind i want to talk a little bit about how uh, Jesus alluded to it, how we kind of came to this, right? Because at least as NYCC, and I think a Rob with Churches United for Fair Housing as well, um, a number of our members are from the Puerto Rican diaspora. And, um, and I believe New York has the largest percentage of, of uh, Puerto Ricans outside of Puerto Rico. 
And um, so we normally like this is such a global issue, right? I mean, we're talking about sovereign debt here and um, and a number of experts that we've spoken with about this issue. They're like, wait, what? Wait a second. How is, you know, like folks that are working usually on the state level and community based organizations getting involved with this issue? And it's because so many immigrants from our communities are directly impacted by this. And like Jesus said, many of them have uh, fled the island due to a lack of uh, opportunity and due to complete economic devastation. And so NYCC, um, a, a number of our members kind of urged us to get involved and wanted to get involved in this since uh, the debt crisis kind of uh, imploded, right, which was about, uh, I think, about five years ago. So, uh, so that's kind of the lens that we come into it really from directly impacted folks. Um, and what's happening? That's, that's, that's a very, very loaded question. What's happening? So uh, Puerto Rico, are, uh, the plan for restructuring was approved uh, very recently. Yeah. And uh, the problem is that it imposes a number of cuts, right? So far, over 250 schools have closed. And I think Jesus can speak more about the direct impact uh, of what's happening on the ground. But because Puerto Rico doesn't have normal bankruptcy protection, so even like hypothetically speaking, if you're a municipality, you can file for bankruptcy. If you're an individual, you can file for bankruptcy. If you're a corporation, you know, we all corporations are people, right? Corporations <laughs> can file for bankruptcy. If you're a sovereign nation or if you're a territory like Puerto Rico, you, you are not afforded those same protections. Um, so when Puerto Rico declared that it would default on its debt, and it was unable to pay its creditors. Then Congress passed what's called PROMESA, and uh, which was a type of debt restructuring mechanism, but one that imposed a control board that's incredibly undemocratic, that's not made up of any Puerto Ricans. And they are responsible for all financial decisions that have to do with the island, including negotiating with creditors. Um, so you can imagine that uh, folks who have no ties to the island are much less concerned about um, kind of the, the general well-being of the population. So what's been prioritized is the payment of debt to creditors at the expense of the needs of regular people. So and that's why so many folks have fled, and then that's why NYCC kind of became involved in this fight. And it, Jesus and Rob, if you want to contextualize what's really, happening on the ground. Really quick, like, because our family is directly impacted, we also found like Puerto Rico is like one case study because there's a million Puerto Ricans in New York. Right. Constituency matters for the New York State Legislature, but there's like millions of other immigrants in in New York State. Kind of identical play by the vultures happening in like one of the fastest growing populations of, of immigrants in New York right now are Ecuadorians. They have a growing debt crisis. Same thing happened in Colombia last year, uprisings because of austerity measures like school closures to pay back the voucher funds. We use the same practices in Puerto Rico. Same thing happened in Detroit. I was, I was just going to say Detroit, yeah. And, yep. so, and also the same players. And so before, like when you're just like, who's, like how much debt, let's audit, does that actually, these are the same players. It's not the majority of hedge funds. Most hedge funds want to get paid back money. Hmm. Um, and it's also... Is not the majority of like um, creditors. It's a small group that benefits off of no deals, like in, uh, um, increased interest, beach grabs, hospital yeah. grabs, land grabs. It's, you know, so that's how it's kind of played out. So I'll just back up and pay and and pass it over to um, Rob and others. Yeah, Rob. So so you know, you're the executive director and co-founder of Churches United for Fair Housing. I'm Rob Solano. Um, I love that there's this fair housing angle because uh, I don't know if you guys know, I, I'm doing a documentary on the island um, post, it's about disaster capitalism post Maria. And I mean, every single time I go down, every you know couple of months when I go down for an extensive period of time, I am, it is it is jarring. I'll tour around the island. I was in Rincon, you know, last time, like a few weeks ago. And the development, um, the, 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 the fast shift in development and how fast it's happening is jaw dropping like it's it's really concerning um so i'm glad that you're you're you know you're representing the housing situation because this is the fiscal control board uh with you know that responds to hedge funds basically and vulture vulture capitalists this is happening in juxtaposition as people are fleeing the island and people are buying property or developing is this all coordinated or is this just sort of like how it how it plays out normally oh it's incredibly coordinated and and really 
Puerto Rico, for some folks, may seem far, right? If you're in Bushwick or if you're in New York, it seems like a far place in your mind. Uh, we were born in Williamsburg, right? Our organization was founded in Williamsburg, and that could be something as a grounding example for everyone. Williamsburg, 30 years from now, when I was born in Williamsburg, is much different than it is today, right? So let's just ground that somewhere where you've been, right? You've been to Peter Luger's, you've been over the Williamsburg Bridge. You can physically see towers hovering over this community that never existed before. And really, that's only being built, not by the 1%, by the 0.5% of, of people who have money. And they're, and they able to do that in Williamsburg with all the laws and all the protection and all the government support that you can have. And it happened here at home. Imagine if they get to play in other countries where you don't have that protection, you don't have bankruptcy laws, you don't have any rules or regulations. So if they can get away with what they're able to get away with right here in our backyards, right? Our homeless crisis is the highest it's ever been in New York. Our disparity from rich to poor, the middle class is gone in New York, right? So if we're able to do that here with some of the best legislators in the world, imagine what's happening. You can only now start to imagine what's happening in Puerto Rico, El Salvador, Ecuador, and Argentina. And really, I wanted to talk about the word vulture. Yeah. If, and Republicans and the left and the right have really good terminology that make people sound better. There's a right to work state that sounds really good, but basically is a non-union tactic, right? Mm -hmm. They're calling their own people vulture. So of the 1%, they commonly call the other rich guy a <laughs> vulture fund, like a friend. And they're saying, even in our crew, the Amazon, the Jeff Bezos of the world, even they're saying, hey, we're bad. We're like awful. And we do bad work practices and we get your, your soap in 20 minutes to your house and we break a bunch of laws to do it. But then we have a whole bunch of friends that are worse than us, and they're so bad, we don't even want to give them a cool name, we call them vultures, that basically <laughs> prey on the dead to get money from them. So they're not even cool with them. So if we don't like the 1%, which most of us don't, they don't like them either. And I really want to get one big example, and then we get into this presentation. For every dollar that they're borrowing over the borrowing and over the borrowing, they're charging $900 sometimes on a dollar. Oh so my god. This is a big example. If I lend you a dollar, I will eventually want nine hundred dollars back from you. You couldn't even give me the dollar back. And now I want the nine hundred dollars back. And I paid a penny to get the dollar. So the 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 incredibleness of this escapes it. This is usually like a banking thing. These are usually like Harvard and Yale grads that get on the call and do this. What we're trying to do in New York is organizers from faith-based communities from organizing communities like NYCC and Cuff are stepping up to this conversation to say, you're no longer gonna hide behind professors, fancy spreadsheets. At least you could speak for seven hours and show you a hundred page report that I can summarize in a sentence, right? Vultures are picking on the dead and, and, and killing them off, right? And there's 900 pages to explain that and get to the point which we're gonna get to a couple of pages, which I think at least you should talk about, but really for your listeners today, it is, this is happening in Puerto Rico. This is happening in countries that our families, our grandmothers, our aunts, our matriarchs of our family who protect us and love us came to New York for a reason. Mm -hmm. And right next to them are New Yorkers that are preying on their countries. And we have an excellent opportunity because no one's going to recreate Wall Street anywhere else in the world, right? This, this phrase that Wall Street will all of a sudden become in the Poconos is not going to happen. Right. Wall Street is Wall Street and will always be Wall Street. We can govern that community right here in New York that handles 95 percent of the vulture debt. So we have an incredible opportunity to touch a law that hasn't been touched in over 100 years to really do something generational. And I'm going to make Elise uh, sound is really smart. She's going to go through over the PowerPoint. But I really want it to as we're going through this, they're called vultures for a reason, and they welcome that terminology, right? Like, yeah, we're both here. This is what we do. So I'll toss it back over to the main singer today. Uh, to go really through. quick to ad lip the, yeah. over to Elise. Rob is actually right. These are not like uh, yeah. investors. These are like um, Harvard grad litigators. Yeah. That their main mission is to litigate for yes. money. Yes. They're not trying to invest to make, <laughs> their, their main mission is the vulture funds are Kind of just their their play is to litigate 
for interest and money and and land grabs and um they're not like categorized as investors and so i'll pass it back over to alicia yeah um so okay so just just to kind of back up and 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 give you um kind of some context right so when you think about a debt crisis whether it's puerto rico whether it's argentina the congo greece right a number of years ago um, I'm actually currently in Brazil right now. I'm Brazilian. I grew up here in the 90s and Brazil was in the midst of a huge debt crisis when we were also uh, victims of vultures. So this is to say that no country is safe, right? Um, and what generally happens is if, you know, a country realizes that it's got a, you know, you issued a number of bonds and because of things like what uh, Rob was alluding to with the interest, compound interest is something that's been um, used as a financial, you know, a quote unquote financial innovation, a financial tactic, which is really just predatory interest. Um, and you realize you can't pay your debt, right? So Puerto Rico realized that it couldn't pay and it had to default. So usually the financial markets go crazy when this happens. And the actual investors that bought these bonds and invested in the country freak out. That's the first thing that happens. And then they end up selling those bonds on the secondary market. So they sell them for very little. For They, get, they end up losing money. They sell them for uh, 10 cents on the dollar, sometimes pennies on the dollar, depending on the country. So and then that's when the vultures strike, when that happens. The country has just defaulted. And then you ask yourself, who in their right mind would buy... <laughs> Uh, would buy uh, essentially kind of distressed bonds with that belongs to a country that has no ability to pay it back. So that's when they strike. And so they buy the bonds in the secondary market. And in the meanwhile, the country says to all the creditors, hey, you know, we can't pay you. COVID is a great example, right? COVID has significantly depleted the revenue stream of countries around the world. And we are in the midst of, of many potential debt crises. So we said, you know, COVID, we don't have a lot of money. Um, you have to understand this, that our financial situation changed. And most creditors will understand this, right? Because at the end of the day, you can't, you can't suck money out of something that's not there. What, what's the expression? You can't get money out of a stone. Yeah, <laughs> you can't exactly. suck blood out of a stone. Um, and uh, so most creditors will come to the table and say, OK, let's change the terms of this and let's restructure your debt. And the vultures say, no, 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 because how am I, you know, like this is when they strike. How am I going to make more money? So they refuse to engage in any kind of negotiation. And then they go to a court in New York and they go to courts in uh, England. That's where most of the sovereign uh, bond markets are. That's wow. the law that governs these contracts. And they say, I bought these bonds for three pennies on three uh, for three cents on the dollar. And I want you to repay me in full and pay me. And it doesn't matter if all the other creditors are coming to the table. I want my full repayment. I don't I'm not going to give you debt relief. Um, so they end up stalling the entire process because oftentimes these contracts, they're governed by unanimity clauses. That's mm. what happens when you don't have bankruptcy protections. Wow. If you have a bankruptcy protection and um, and you have, you know, you have to renegotiate your debt. You only need a majority of creditors, a super majority to agree to the terms. So if you have a vulture who says, no, I don't want to, it doesn't matter. He's out. That's, that's what bankruptcy gives you with a number of other stipulations as well. So these countries end up becoming victims of this in the sense that, um, these, uh, crises go on for a long time. Argentina, I believe it went on for about 15 years. Over 90% of creditors agreed to move forward. Uh, 8% didn't. Paul Singer, who is a pioneering vulture investor, was one of those people. Um, there was a protracted court battle. Argentina was in an economic depression during this time. It had no access to capital markets. Ultimately, it was a, new, uh, was a decision by a federal judge interpreting New York state law that allowed Elliott Management, or Paul Singer, to have he bought $140 million worth of Argentinian bonds, and Nomiki, guess how much he walked away with? $140 million investment. I, I don't even know. I, I don't even know. <laughs> 2.3 billion. Oh my God. 2.3 billion. And it was a New York state judge interpreting New York law because there is no law that governs these kinds of transactions. At so least what we're trying. Go ahead. Perfect subway because you mentioned one of the players. 
and the game to to pivot to champity. I just wanted to quickly say like New York State <clears throat> usually like New York like as we're speaking to New York State legislators, they're like, this is international. How does this impact us? Go to Congress. Like some heads and like don't know that they haven't said this, but like they you know are surprised that New York State has some purview to these New York State governed contracts, and so really. They're resp- I, I really hope that they respond to our call to do what's right. Like these, these predatory practices have had real mm-hmm. impacts. Hundreds of schools closed in Puerto Rico. Yes, of course. Uh, in the Congo, I think it's taken them, like they had to take away like um, nutrition programs. And this is because, just so folks understand, this is because the, the, the Fiscal Control Board has put people in the, the, the island in debt so much that the money is not going, things are being starved, and it's not going to schools, it's not going to infrastructure, it's yep. not going to hospitals, it's not going, and they're rising, you know, the tuition costs, yep. uh, because the Happening tax money is- in other places. Exactly. Um, it was like one example, and I think what we've been trying to do is, we call them vulture funds and clip their wings as much as possible, so that, like, to prevent- future practices. And so we've like, um, also are looking at like, what's, what's happening in Puerto Rico is like an existing current debt, there's oversight, there's some restructuring process happening. In other places, there's still no restructuring process happening, but the deal has been done in, in many places. And so what are other ways to like, deal with happen in the past, restructuring that debt, and also prevent them from doing right. something in the future. And I think one of the things, like one of the things, is a reform to the Champity Doctrine. And I wanted at least to spend a few minutes on that, so that way, um, before we wrap here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was just gonna I, ju- just to finish about um, New York State law and the fact that you know this holdout problem that we have. If you're a minority uh, creditor and you're able to hold out the entire process. Um, what we're doing is it's a twofold kind of legislative proposal. One is the model law, which would, it's very simple. It would impose super majority rule over um, restructuring procedures under New York law. So if you buy New York governed bonds, you know that in the case that a country defaults and has to restructure, what a super majority creditor says goes. So mm-hmm. out with the Paul Singers, out with trying to extract um, disproportionate payment and take advantage of of uh, money that should be going to, like you said, Nomiki, to public health and to basic infrastructure that's just being pocketed by investors in Wall Street. Um, and Champerty, which is what, uh, what Jesus was referring to, is a law that's been in the books for a very long time. It's actually an old English statute. And it just says, it's very simple. It says that you can't buy an investment. You can't buy securities for the purpose of litigating. And if you recall what we're saying, we're saying that vultures are not investors, they're litigators. Right. So it would completely cut at their entire business model. So we, we feel that, you know, these two pieces of legislation are really intended to box them in and prevent this from, from happening to other countries around the world. Can, can I just a quick follow-up question real quick? It, they may not be in the game of making money through traditional investments, but they've, they've created a, a situation in which now – investors go in and buy distressed properties for much cheaper or, you know, take advantage of local tax laws that are simultaneously said to attract, you know, quote unquote business, um, like, like the crypto bros that are all moving to the island right now and, and may or may not be producing jobs, but it's, it's a tax break for them. So, but that probably wouldn't have happened if you didn't have the debt crisis. You're, you're correct on that. There are ripple effects and, you know, Practices, uh, you know, have like it sets the tone and 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 um, definitely has an impact on gentr- gentrifying uh, our homes in, in Puerto Rico and um, and yeah, I feel like the 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 Champerty doctrine, what Alicia just mentioned, mm-hmm. the change there was a, a statute change in the law in 2002 or 2004, very different New York state legislature protect each other silver, which were less likely to confront um, corruption. And so we're hoping, and so Paul Singer literally just kind of changed the law where the big players can actually sue for, um, can litigate on on debt. Hmm. Um, And so we're just looking to reverse the two sentences in the law, a few sentences, and also strengthen it. And so Alicia has been, um, and has been um, getting a little close, like going a little closer and looking at ways to strengthen the law and also just reverse this favor to the pioneer of hedge funds, uh, vulture funds. And so um, 
we're hoping that the that that if we if we actually get the the Champerty Doctrine reform, then it will prevent vulture funds from making these deals in New York State for the sole purpose of litigating. And it could clip, you know, no silver bullet in any of this. You know, you you all know very well the limitations of legislation and how it doesn't cover all angles, but we think this is a significant uh mm -hmm. would, would significantly decrease the amount of vulture, vulture fund practices. So who do we need to um call and lobby? I'm a New Yorker. <laughs> I'll show up. <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me do that, right? So you're angry now, right? You oh, just yeah. heard vultures are taking over our good people. Our our next door neighbor is Puerto Rican or our downstairs neighbor is Latino. Oh, I'm that. And and what do I do? Easy. You have a state senator or a state assembly, call them. Tell them you heard this podcast. You saw us on YouTube. You, did you sign mm -hmm. on to this law that will protect a Puerto Rican, not just Puerto Ricans, but everywhere in the world, right? So it doesn't matter what country you're in, this will protect you. We have the law on the PDF. I think that was just up. There's a couple of different versions of it. Um, just call your state assembly member, state senator, say, have you sponsored this law, right? And it's there. Mm -hmm. It's S99 and 82195. If we go up the next one, uh, we, we're going to get a, a number for the Champery, but the, uh, there's capital gains tax, which is S2522 and 83352 in the assembly. And then the big one, this is the one I think is a little bit of a sword, not a silver bullet, but the model law, right? S6627 in the Senate and the assembly 87562. I just shot out a, bit, a bunch of numbers, but this is when you call your state senator, you give them the S, S for Senate, and uh, you call your assembly person A. If that seems too hard for you, uh, call us and join us and we'll find out who your state senator is and who your assembly person is this is where we're really good at right this is not trying to help the world and in every single country this is right here in new york this is incredibly tangible this is a law that should pass right if we're representing 99 percent of the people right that's a lot of state elected officials that can support this law it will make a significant difference throughout the world on how vulture funds behave in those countries and can happen as soon as the budget is passed in March 30th, April 1st. So in literally a couple of months, we can change this historical global law and put it in effect pretty quickly. And folks, you know, the New York State Senate uh, in particular, you know, there's been a sea change there. So there's opportunity in ways that there wasn't before. Um, Senator Gennaris, are you listening to me? Assembly member Zaran Mandavi, are you listening to me? I think they'll be fine, but yeah. but <laughs> I'm going to call their offices personally. I'm going to show up at their no, office. I just emailed their office and we're waiting for a meeting. So if you could do it, that would be great. Uh, okay. Yeah. You, I, I will show up outside. <laughs> Happy to do so. Uh, this was this was super fascinating. I know it was a lot of information, so thanks for for being able to do it so quickly uh, with a little roundtable. But any final thoughts before we we run out? There's a website. Jesus, what's the website? So people we'll put it up there too. We'll put it up. But what's the? We have a website. We'll put it up uh, for you all. But one one last thing I do I do want to say is this is incredibly uh, tangible. It's a lot to kind of process, but uh, you can just simply call your state and elected official and it will make a big difference. We're trying to create momentum. We're calling 20 elected officials a week. So if you could be part of that call and just call for us, we'll be incredibly helpful and, and we'll help the lives of millions to millions of people throughout the world. Awesome. I love it. Thank you guys so much. This was a fascinating conversation. Um, Elise, Jesus, and Rob, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, we'll have all your information up on screen and all the different places that we post our, our show. So uh, go check it out and make some calls. And like you said, it could happen anywhere, really. I mean, I'm Greek. When I went to Puerto Rico, I was like, oh, my God, this is exactly what's happening. Where My family is in Greece right now. Can't afford to survive. Um, so it does. It's, it's very smart that you did this. Thank you very much, guys. Bye. Thank Bye. you.